Welcome to Getting Real with Real Estate with Danielle Kempf and Jim Kempf, St. Louis's favorite father-daughter real estate team. Your source of real estate information in the greater St. Louis area. All right. All right, here we go. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Feels like it's been a minute, but... Uh... Yeah, welcome to. It's been to a the... minute since we've been back in the booth. Yeah, we've had, we've had a bunch of bunch of podcast <laughs> air, but it's been a minute since we've been back in the booth, so it's yeah. good to be back. Good to be back. Welcome to everybody listening. We appreciate you. Yes, All our, thank you. Our friends in Europe that are listening today, and our one in Washington, Missouri. <laughs> you know who you are. That's right. <laughs> Shout out for sure. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Well, it's. Uh, I guess Should we, we start need, with a joke. We need to start with a joke. Yep, start Absolutely. With our joke. All yeah. right. So, how many ants does it take to rent a house? Ant like the animal, not like ants like the little ants. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna give my same guy. I'm gonna guess a dozen. You're gonna guess a dozen. A dozen. I, I mean, you're. Kind I don't of know close. why. I don't know why. Just throwing a number. Okay, you're kind of <laughs> close. It takes ten ants. Ten ants. Ten, ten ants. ants. <laughs> uh, Get it? I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> that was my cheesy one, but, but you know what? It goes in today's topic, and today yeah. we're going to talk about how people obtain their first rental. Yep. Um, kind of some ins and outs of being a landlord, and yep. I'm sure you're going to share a horror story or two or Couple? three or Probably. four. Y'all <laughs> just pod, keep counting. <laughs> this podcast is only going to be like four hours long, and it's going to be Jim's story time. So grab your popcorn, <laughs> grab a soda, All right, and. I'm Let's ki- get on in it. Right. I'm kidding on the four hours, guys. Yeah, no, just no, no. hang in there. Keep listening. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay. Well, let's just start. So I guess, well, first, before we do, I got a question. Uh-huh. So you're a landlord. So I, yeah. when did you get your first rental? And I guess, why did you get your first rental? Yeah, okay. Uh, so the first one that I rented was, uh, it was a, a family. It was a house in the family. It was actually my aunt's house. Mm-hmm. That um, it was formerly my grandparents, and then my aunt lived there. She always lived there, and she went in a nursing home, and she needed money to stay there and stuff. So um, I ended up buying that off of her, okay. and then I rented it out. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a complete disaster the first time around, but that yeah, we'll tell that, remember that we'll tell that story later. But that was the first one, um, and and the why part was. Um, yeah, I, I had been thinking about that for a long time about trying to get some rental property, and and um, it really honestly it goes back to high school. I, I can remember all the way back to high school, and uh, you can. Or, well, yeah, I can't remember what I had for lunch, but I can remember <laughs> back to high school. But Mr. Evans was our uh, he was our shop teacher in our um, he did uh, he taught shop and uh, like architectural drawing. Okay. And Mr. Evans taught us about OPM, What's other that? other people's money. Okay. And Mr. Evans had a couple of uh, he had a couple of either four family or duplexes or something, but he had some re- some rental properties, mm-hmm. and he taught us about OPM, and it mm-hmm. honestly got stuck with me ever since. And I always kind of wanted to do that, mm-hmm. um, to just give it a try because I knew there were some you know there's some obvious benefits to it, right? There's some obvious headaches to it as well, but <laughs> but there's some be- really good you know building net worth and um, for your future and you know those kind of things yeah. Uh, so yeah so that's that's how it was I owe it all to Mr. Evans all to Mr. Evans back yeah. in high school yeah okay. that's right so that's exactly I guess right. you kind of how some people get there some people get it from like a death in the family like they inherit the property right maybe it's like the parents house and they yep. passed and you just ended up with a house and some people are like well might now well. that I have this house might as well rent it right. try and get some at extra that, income. Yeah, at that point, they may not have a mortgage on it, right? Yeah. Because mom and dad probably paid it off, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, maybe they got to throw some money in it to fix it up a little, or maybe they don't. But they try, yeah, get, yeah. Let, hey, let's put a tenant in there, try to make some money. Exactly. Right? That's so what people do it. Yeah, that's, it can be a little uh, additional uh, income coming in monthly. Yeah. So that's one way. One way. Um, you know, back when I started in the real estate business, probably the number one reason was people couldn't sell their house, but they, yeah. maybe they needed to move, right? So they moved into a, another house, and and just flat out couldn't sell their other one because obviously the market was way different then. Yeah. But that a lot of people did it then, so they kind of got into a house because they had, a rental because they had, they had to. to. Yeah. Not yeah, because really they couldn't sell choice. the house, they couldn't have right. the two mortgages. Might as well have someone else help you pay that mortgage. Yeah. Well, hope hopefully. Hope, yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Okay, true. So sometimes it didn't work out real well <laughs> yeah. for them. But that's that's the big reason a lot of people did it back in and back that, then. that's oh eight oh nine ten. Yeah, you know, and then I feel in, like today moving 
to 2023. It's people are moving from maybe that first home, could be a second home, and they're moving up to that bigger home. And there's like, oh, well, yeah. now that we have this home that we already had and we don't mm-hmm. need it, yeah. we need it right now, let's put a tenant in and yeah. try and get that income that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we yeah. Uh, we talked about just recently some clients in Tower Grove South that did that exact yeah. same thing. Yes, they, they did. They moved into a bigger home and had a nice little two-bedroom that they rented and yeah. it's been going well for them. So exactly. things, So sometimes that can work out sometimes really good. Sometimes that works. And yeah. then sometimes it's just, you. it's time to start investing differently. Maybe you've put yeah. all your money in stocks and bonds and CDs and crypto and... <laughs> You want something different, so it's a good diversification. It tool, is, really. Yes. It's a good hedge against inflation. Real estate is mm-hmm. so. There's and and there can be some tax benefits to it for you. So, mm-hmm. talk. You know, I'm not a, a, an accountant, and I'm not claiming to be, but talk to your accountant about it because there there can be some tax advantages to having rental property. Yeah, that can really help you. So, and it's a, just a good way of building long term net worth. Yeah, but you got to be in it for the long run. You can't. You know, or you got to have a plan, I guess, right? You Uh might have a 10 year plan, you might have a 15 year plan, whatever, but you got to have some somewhat of a plan. Uh Don't don't just buy it thinking, well, I guess you can't, but I mean, you you really should have a plan, right? Am I going to hold this property till I die? Am I going to, you know, kind of what's the deal? Do I want to? Own it for what 10 kind of years house and is sell it out. Too? Is it for like a first time yeah, home different. buyer? Maybe like a group of like college kids in the area who need a home? Is it maybe for a small family, a bigger family? Yep. You kind of have to think about that as well. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I'll just share with folks, you know, like, and sometimes you don't have a, like, if you inherit a house, you might not have a choice in this, but you got to, I would watch where you buy your rental houses. If you're going to buy a first rental home, I would suggest to you try to keep it pretty close to where you live, um, or work or something. Uh, yeah, something because um, and, and you I'll don't just, want to be driving a half hour. Like I well, know you do. You drive it, like yeah. a half hour to go cut the grass if and you, stuff. Yeah, right. So if you you know if you have a rental house and and you have to go do something like a couple of my houses, I know it's a, it's an hour round trip no matter what I'm doing. If mm-hmm. I just got to go change a light bulb, it's an hour round trip. Yeah. And so, that takes up time in your day. Yeah. So if that house was down the street, it'd be a lot, a lot it's better. Hard. So, and, and folks, I guarantee you, you're not going to think about that necessarily when you're buying your first rental. No. I've talked to people that they're like, well, I got one in St. Charles. I got one in South City. I got one, at, you know, in Florissant. And I'm like, ooh, boy. You're all over the place. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're, if you're managing it yourself, and we'll be talking about that, I guess, at some mm-hmm. point. But, well, that's kind of, I guess, what we're going to we'll talk just about next. We'll go into that now. Dump into that. If you're, yeah. you're going to manage it yourself... Um, do yourself a favor and try to keep it central. Try to keep them central. Yeah. yeah. Keep them uh, keep them all within a, you know, whatever. If you can keep it within 15 minutes of home or whatever, that's mm-hmm. a I think that's a great plan. Yeah. Uh, you might not want it right next door to you. That might be too no. close. Yeah. But, you know, that's it, that's really a, I think a good idea to, okay. to keep it kind of close to you. Okay. But So since you have been managing rental properties, what are some kind of insider tips that you would give someone for managing their first rental by themselves? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, um, well, you know, just simple stuff. I think uh, number one is make sure you go see the house every month. You okay. know, you, as, a, as a landlord, you have a right to go into your house. You just got to let your tenants know. But I would, I would like, you know, go change a furnace filter every month. And that gives you a good excuse to go into the house hmm. and take a look around. Okay. Um, and just, just look, you know, take a look under the sinks, take a quick look. At, Make sure nothing's leaking. Yeah, yeah, because sort of tenants don't necessarily always tell you. No. And then next thing you know, you got, you know, water damage on the floor of your bathroom or you got, you know, water damage under a sink or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. So I, if, if I could tell people one thing, and I didn't always do that because just honestly, I just a lot of times didn't have the time. But if I could give people one tip that I think would be benefit them greatly is, is to do that because that puts you in the property one time a month. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, if your tenants are kind of sloppy and the place is not well kept, right, yeah. you can get on them a little bit before next thing you know you got roaches or something in the place, right? So it's yeah. kind of nasty. but yeah. it, it mean, happens. But that way, you know, I mean, hopefully you got a good tenant and you don't have to worry about that. But seriously, that's... Mm-hmm. That's a good, I think, a really good tip. And and then the plus, then the tenant knows you're kind of I- involved and you're going to be around, and they're going to, I think, take a little better care of them. They kind of get to know you, a and they get bit. yeah, and you get to know them. That's a good point. That's a really yeah. good point. Just kind of getting to know them a little bit. <laughs> um, you don't want to be their friend, but you want to, you know, get to know them. Yeah, yeah. yeah you so. kind of want to know what they're up to because yeah, you kind of mentioned it earlier. You want good tenants. I mean, I'll say we. Y- you've had it where 
tenant trashed the house and we get to go over and clean it up. So <laughs> let's just dive on into tenant screening. And I think yeah. one of the tips that you would give for that is to have a set criteria for tenant screening. Yeah. And there's a few reasons for doing that, I think. Yeah. And so I think one of them, probably maybe not the most important one that you think of off the top of your head, but that's like fair housing. Right. So fair housing and the Missouri Human Rights Act, um, you can't discriminate against people for housing based on you know their race, color, national origin, ancestry, religion, uh, sex, familial status, disability. Right. Right, right, and right. one of them is that one of them terms in there is that you can't set different criterias for tenants on for like different tenants. You right. have to have a set criteria for all your tenants that they meet. Right. That's that that really kind of is important mm-hmm. because that keeps you that keeps you straight. I mean, yeah. just honestly, you, you know, you can your your criteria can have to do with credit score. Mm-hmm. It can have to do with background how many background history. Yeah, you know, if you you can say hey, no criminal background or you can say no whatever it might be. I don't want anybody that's a, you know, child molester or something like that, registered sex offender, they're out automatically, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't meet your criteria. Credit score, like I said, um, can be one. Mm -hmm. Income, right? You have to have, maybe you say they got to have four times income or whatever. Yeah. But that seems like that's sometimes hard for tenants to do. Like as me personally, who's rented before, me and my roommates, we have never made four times. We've made close to maybe three, three and a half, but we've never mm-hmm. made that four. Yeah. But uh, again, it's just it, making sure that they are able to pay your rent each correct, month. Correct. Plus the bills, plus have food on the table and, and yeah. living. And it is gross income too, not just, you know, it's not net after tax income that you're looking oh. at. But that is true. You're right about that. I mean, that can be a, a tough. But again, you want to make sure that the people have the money. Exactly. Yeah. And We're talking right now y- on yeah. a, from a landlord's perspective. We've yeah. already done rentals versus buying for a yeah for a, a homeowner's tenant's perspective. Right. Right. Yeah. It's it's just important to um, make sure that rent's covered and you know that mm-hmm. the folks have because there's always going to it's just, here everybody in everybody's life something comes up right. Yeah. You have a an issue and it's going to cost you some money and it's going to be uh, out of the order, the car breaks down or whatever, but you want to you want to make sure that the tenant has the income that can support that that right. monthly mortgage yeah. for you. Otherwise, you know, well, we'll talk about the other side of that story if they can't afford it. Yeah, right? we'll get Coming to that a little bit later. But, but that fair housing is important. I mean, that's that's one thing. Oh, yeah. And 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 tenant screening tip number number one from old Jimbo here is that if 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 you have if somebody comes to look at your house, right, if you're getting ready to rent it out mm-hmm. and they tell you that they have the deposit and the first month's rent in their pocket and they really want the house right now, I'm just telling you, don't rent to them. Oh, and I, I, yeah, and I know you why. Know, you know why? I know why, yeah. Because they're they, not paying someone else that. That's exactly right. A hundred times out of a hundred times that happened. And it's happened to me and I've yeah. taken it before. And I'll be, oh, you're really ready. You really like to pay. Great, great. Yeah, Move sure. Move on in. Sign here, right? And then, you know, and then next thing you know, they're not paying me just like they weren't paying the last landlord. Mm-hmm. So that that goes back to that tenant screening. So you really, you know, there there have been times where I didn't do the best, uh, you know, I didn't do the best job of doing yeah. it. And I would recommend, here's, my, here's tip number two, I guess. Okay. Um, I would have someone do your screening for you. Yeah, because you can pay for services. Definitely don't do that yourself. There are services out there that where the tenant is responsible for filling out the app, but they pay their own fee, right? Mm-hmm. So Yeah, typically tenants pay their own application yep. fee. Um, screen Door is one that I've used in the past. They do a great job. Uh, you can have it done like on Zillow.com. Yeah, I, was say, I think Zillow I'm not has a, one. I'm not a Zillow fan, but they, they have a screening service mm-hmm. that you can use there. And uh, uh, I definitely just do that because that is something that um, they're going to look. They, they have much more resources than probably you do. You know, everybody like I've had, you know, I'll go on CaseNet and I'll look at somebody and, you know, I can kind of see for mm-hmm. the most part a lot of the, you know. Get some history on them. You can get some history. But, you know, depending on the name and how common it is, you, you're not sure if it's them or not and all this stuff. So definitely make sure you you have some tenant screening done whether it costs you a little bit or you can always pass that cost to the yeah. tenant because most tenants will pay it because they have to yeah. Um, yeah. so it's that's definitely 
yeah, uh, it's something I would recommend people do. So do you call um, past tenants landlords? or I have before. Tenants past landlords? So, yeah, I have so before. So what do you when do I, when a friend answers the phone? <laughs> well, here, here's what I, yeah, so I, uh, <laughs> tenant, this is tip number three, I guess. So I <laughs> used to. Because you hear this all the time. I mean, like people well, joke about it. So like when I was, when I used to work at Ford, I, w- I used to skip trace people, right? So I used to collect car payments and yeah. track people all over God's creation. But so I would call, I would take someone's app and I would, you know, they, they put down that Joe Blow is their landlord and they give you Joe Blow's number. And when you look up the property address in the tax records, you find it's out it's them. not Joe Blow. It's, you know, Sarah Smith, it's Sarah Smith or whatever. And so you look up Sarah Smith and call Sarah Smith and go, hey, does does so and so rent from you? And they go, well, yeah, but she hasn't been paying me. And so there you, that's why that's they you gave know. you that's why they gave you Joe Blow's name. So, yeah, I mean, people, and I know, you know, people don't falsify information on applications, but they do. So you got to be careful, right? You got to, so gotta that's why. You got to protect yourself. As a landlord, you got to protect yourself. You got to protect yourself. And that's why you need a tenant screening service yes. because most people don't have time to do all that stuff themselves. And the, the tenant screening service will, again, that kind of help you with the, you know, with the, the fair housing, fair housing part issues. Of it. You yeah. Because that's, you know, you, you set just, your criteria, and if they just don't match it, that's right. the same criteria for every single person. And right. you're not, you know, it basing it off one person or another. Because right. you, can't, you can't do that. That's right. If they got bad credit, no matter what their, you know, family status is, race is, any of that stuff, don't, mm-hmm. they just got bad credit and they're not going to pay you. So that's, yep. if they've been evicted five times, then they're off the list. Right? Yeah, exactly. You just exactly. Won't, won't do it. So. Yeah, it's you, you got it. That's that's something you guys got to do. So that's that's important. Mm-hmm. And and um, you want to talk about management, property management, property while we're kind of talking yeah. about tenant screening as well. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Um, you know, so so property management can be a really good idea for folks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, typically they take a percentage off the top of the rent. Yep, they're going to take eight to ten percent of the monthly rent. But you know they're going to handle stuff. They're they're not going to they're going to get those calls at three in the morning when the toilet backs up and not you. Mm-hmm. So and, and then they'll have people that can go fix things. Yep. But of course you're paying for all this stuff, so don't you know it's not the easiest. It's easier, but mm-hmm. it's going to cost you a little bit. So you 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 have to kind of you know understand your weigh cash flow way yeah oh, and, you, and look at your cash flow too. too because depending on you know if you have a loan against a property and remember you always got to pay we'll talk about that probably when we we'll talk look about, at analysis well, here, you'll finish it. up this thought and then we'll jump into but, that yeah but i mean it's just it, just remember property management comes with a cost but it is um it can be very valuable for you right i mean yeah. it can just make your hands off yeah and and that just simplifies it and then you're so just you can have time check. for your other daily so you can life. actually yeah have yeah. a life unlike me yes <laughs> But let's jump back because you talked about having like money because you just said like that home is not, you know, probably 95 percent of the time going to have a mortgage on it unless Mm -hmm. it was maybe like a parent's home that you inherited. Yeah, but you're probably going to have a mortgage. But you're probably going to have a mortgage on it. So as you're collecting rent, you need to create a money reserve from Mm -hmm. that to for repairs, for vacancies. What happens if, you know, your tenant leaves? Can you afford to pay those two mortgages until you get a new person in? And it's not always as easy as just, you know, putting it on Zillow, getting a new person in the door in a week. You usually have to go in. You got to sometimes new paint, new carpets, maybe new appliances, definitely a deep clean. Is it going to be you that does that? Are you going to pay someone like a cleaning company to do that? You got to make sure you have those money reserves so you can do the repairs and get ready and for the that's vacancies. A big, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really smart. That's a big part of it. Um, you know, a lot of folks will, when they get into their first rental, they'll just, they'll just say like, well, you know, I'm going to be able to, my, my mortgage is 800 and I can get 950. So I'm making 150 bucks a month. Yeah. Right. So that's not bad. No. So they think. Right. But again, like Danielle just said, what happens when your water heater goes so, out in six months? How yeah. long is that? 150 right. bucks every month. How many months do you need right. that you, supply? Right. If you have to put a water heater in a house, that's 10 months right there. Right. Of your profit gone. Mm-hmm. 1500 bucks. I mean, give or take. I'm yeah. estimating here. But, but yeah, roughly. So, so you have to understand that. Right. And if and if a tenant misses. Right. Let's say they miss a month's payment on you and your payment's 800. Right. That 150. I'm doing my math, math. but it's It's four and a half times probably or four or five times, right, that that 150. So Mm -hmm. that's four or five months of your profit gone in one month. Yeah. So and and again, like what Danielle said, when a tenant leaves you, 
you can almost guarantee that house will be vacant for two months. Be, mm-hmm. While you're cleaning it up, fixing it up, you got to get it reinspected. Almost oh, every yeah. case, you're going to have to have an occupancy. occupancy inspection. Almost no matter where you're at, um, you know. And there's always those inspectors always find something. No matter how good you prepare a house, they always find something, and you always got to fix stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's money coming out of your pocket. Right? And you're lucky if it's just like a light cleaning. We've, you said earlier, roaches in the house. We've had oh, yeah. real nasty. Oh yeah aftermath of tenants oh yeah it's horrible i mean i've had i've filled 40 yard dumpsters full of tenant stuff out of a house so yeah i mean you know you got to prepare for all that stuff Mm -hmm. so you got to make sure you keep a reserve or i mean if if you don't keep the reserve you just have to know you've got some money somewhere else or maybe your full-time job allows you to make two payments or whatever it is but i'm just telling you you got to make sure that that you have that uh, in in your back pocket because sooner or later you're going to need it. Yeah, right? sooner or later you're going to have a vacancy. And so yep. let's kind of jump on into that topic. How do you evict someone? So like best case scenario, well, best your case tenant, scenario never. Well, yes, best case scenario, <laughs> your tenant never leaves. They pay off the entire mortgage until like the day they die. They're there for forty years. Right. Um, other best case option, they say, hi, I'm giving you my 30-day, 60-day notice. I'm finding a new place. They leave it nice and tidy for you. You just need to go in, do a light clean to it. Mm-hmm. Golden. But what happens when you need to evict someone? Yeah, that's a problem. That is a problem. What happens if they're just Get a good not attorney. paying rent? Get a good attorney. I'll tell you that right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, here again, right? If somebody doesn't pay you, um, and, and this is something I would recommend to you, too. So this is tip number what now, four or five or Six, who seven. knows. But I'm not keeping tabs. But, um, you know, when it comes to an event, if a tenant starts to pay you late and it's you start to see a little bit of a pattern, uh, you really should file for eviction the second they miss a month's rent. <laughs> because usually, um, you know, if they're 30 days late, mm-hmm. You know, if, if they're, oh, let's say they're over 30, you know, you're being nice and, you know, oh, they just, you know, had a hard time or whatever. They just had a hard mom. And, and now all of a sudden you're, uh, let's say you're two payments behind. You're, you know, they're, they're a month, they owe you a month and then the next month's due, right? Mm-hmm. So they're two months behind essentially. Um, it's going to take, if you, if you have to file for eviction, at least in St. Louis County, it takes about 30 days, if not a little mm-hmm. bit longer, right? So you're talking about, a, you know, a charge of probably four to five hundred bucks just to go through the court process, get your judgment, and then you have to have the sheriff. Uh, you got to pay the sheriff to to actually serve the you know the eviction the and and get the house back, the possession back. Yeah. So it can be a pretty drawn out process. So yeah. if you started off two months behind and now all of a sudden it takes three you know another month and a half to get the eviction, you're three and four months behind yeah. on folks. So you really, if you see that kind of trend where people start paying you late, paying you late, paying you late, file right away. And and mm-hmm. one thing it does too, I think, is it it lets them know that you're serious too. Like if it's the first time they're late yeah. and you you know, you file, then they know you they know you're serious about it and yeah. sometimes it wakes people up. But okay. it's you know, you got to you you got to ju- juggle that a little bit with still trying to be a nice human being too cuz yes. honestly, I mean, sometimes good people have bad things happen to them and you just have to ride them out for a minute and and help them a little bit and but <laughs> um sometimes you can get taken advantage of I guess, yeah yeah I yeah but th- it's a good point i mean uh, that vacancy again that just goes back to like you said about keeping that reserve of money yeah and and do yourself a favor and do that stuff so yeah. um that's in, that's very important yeah um, any other tips of the trade that you'd want to share for this one we're going to no. do a little series on rentals so we could we're going to keep going in depth right, on this right we could talk for hours you know oh, most yeah. most ten most homeowners are rather most landlords are small just mom, mom and pops, pops right yeah i think what it's 72 or three percent i think that's what you of, said of people you know of uh, landlords of single family or single units are just just mom and pop you know folks mm-hmm. who own a few properties three i think is the the number average number yeah. So, um, you know, you're not the big conglomerate, but you got to make sure financially you got a little bit of reserves to mm-hmm. take care of yourself throughout the process. Yeah, and but, just to protect yourself throughout the process, yeah. too. Yeah, and, and everything sounded kind of negative. I know we kind of kind of wrap things up, but it's not always negative. Sometimes you get really, you know, I've got some tenants who are just, You've had tenants golden. pay you for, like, what, 10 years? And they're fantastic. They've been in there. Yeah. Uh, 10 or more sometimes, right? So, I mean. But it's always that bad egg that makes the dozen. Or it makes just yeah. 
tenancy, being a landlord. It's just always that bad person, that bad tenant yeah. that gives you these horror stories. And we're just trying to help you so do you your, don't have that issue. Yeah, do your due diligence up front. You're more likely to get that, that good person in there that's going to pay you for five mm-hmm. or six or ten years. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's a good touch on, on stuff. So yeah. um, We'll wrap we'll, on up with that for today. And yeah. we'll be back Stay with another for more. series. You got it. Perfect. Thanks for listening, everyone. All right. See ya. Bye. You've been listening to Getting Real with Real Estate with the Kemp Team. Have questions about real estate or something you'd like to discuss? Contact the Kemp Team at 314-336-1926 or visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Kemp Team. Don't want to miss any episodes? Follow us on your favorite podcast app or YouTube. The Kemp Team. Real. Honest. Real estate.